my name is Ian Burns. I have uh, two works in the show New Romance. Uh, one is called Circle, uh, which features 20 fans screwed onto a table, an umbrella, and um, levitating inflated latex gloves. And the other is called Scroll, which features a kind of a grid of 56 digital alarm clocks. In these works, I guess still sort of stick to my usual sort of practice of taking general consumer items and looking to alter their purpose and make them do what might be slightly magical, phenomenological things. And you know, exploring the functionality, which to me makes a lot of sense against this sort of technology in the post-human thematic that the show revolves around in that, you know, we have all this technology. Yes, there's a lot of advances, but what tends to happen is all these advances still distill down into our appliances. It's all about making a better toaster. I was also thinking about the human angle of the post-human and that's sort of what led to the inflated latex gloves which is something I've been playing with around for, for a little while and trying to figure out a work in which I could use them and make them stable. But my thinking about them, these latex gloves sort of stand in for the, the kind of a carnivalesque rendering of the idea of the victim. But mostly it's really about sort of making some sort of puzzling magical moment. Most of my work's about curiosity. I'm really looking to make work that invokes curiosity because I would subscribe to that point of view that Curiosity is kind of pretty much the first of all passions and everything can begin from there. Uh, the other work which uses the 56 clock radios, a scroll, it just sort of came out of this thing. I'm looking around in Australia for what I could use as a cheap material to make the works for this show and it sort of occurred to me that you know clock radios are a relatively cheap appliance and they could be used somehow. So I bought one and I sort of busted it open and I was looking at its circuits and I posted a picture on social media and a number of people reacted in horror as though I was building a bomb which surprised me. But I decided to sort of go with that paranoia sensibility and turn the clock radios into a text making piece but one that's a little hard to read that maybe references the idea of subliminal messages but plays with that idea of the tabloid or the shock jock and the idea of these sort of contemporary paranoias that are pushed through these you know, less than reputable news, news sources. Given my background as an engineer, when I came to um, looking at art, you know, I, had the, you know, I was the sort of kid that pulled everything apart to try and figure out how it worked. And uh, I, when I came to art, I was like, how does this work? You know, why do we want to see it? What's this weird set of expectations we have when we come into an art museum. Both works sort of have a very sort of rhythmic timing to them, so um, there's kind of a metronomic relationship between them, uh, which I like. I guess the other thing that's sometimes said about my works are that they're a little ugly, a little weird. Uh, they're not necessarily elegant, and that's something that I kind of stick to as an aesthetic practice because I actually feel like we're designing ourselves into our own demise. I mean, there's this sort of emphasis on new things and stylized things and fashion disturbs me greatly. I mean, it leads to this idea that, you know, you've got a perfectly functional digital alarm clock, but you have to get a new one because the look of it's too naff. It's not the right one for the new style. There's an absurdity to the volume of availability and variety of these sorts of appliances that I use in my work in society which I find actually staggering when you just I just can't believe that all this stuff that's getting made and actually finds a consumer it's a little terrifying to me uh, so I tend to want to emphasize that a little bit in the way these things look and are uh, systemically what we're doing in our you know in our hunger for design is so inelegant but I don't understand the idea of, you know, I actually quite consciously try and make my work inelegant. I don't, sometimes in doing so, it, it finds its own sort of language of elegance, but my feeling is that 
art should question these aesthetics and that's sort of the way I think about it. Try and push away from the slick and the design and the things that look nice over the couch. Um, and more about, you know, probably my work looks more like the tangle of cords that are under the couch. <laughs>